Early voting, the 2022 edition of the Preakness, the 147th, the winner. So who's going to be this year's 148th edition of the Preakness? Gary Quill, John Piazzik here representing the Racing Biz, and we're talking the Preakness. John, uh, we found out uh, on Friday, Friday morning First mission, the second choice in uh, the morning line, had to scratch due to a, a left hind injury. So uh, it's becoming slim pickings. Shortest field since 1986, mm -hmm. I believe. That's so right. uh, how are you now looking? Do you have to like re-handicap re it or does this fall into what you've already decided? Well, I had to pick Mage on top, and I think I'm going to stick with him because he was fairly close to the pace in his first two starts. He obviously came from far out of it in both the Florida Derby and the Kentucky Derby. So I think as long as he's about five or six lengths off the lead, he should be okay. That being said, I think the Scratcher First Mission does help National Treasure's chances quite a bit because a lot of people were saying National Treasure and First Mission um, battle for the early lead, and Coffee with Chris was set just off of them. Now... With first mission gone, National Treasure should have a lot easier time on the front end. If he can get away at the half mile in, in about 47 and change, he could be tough to catch, even for a horse like Mage. Well, I mean, I, I see where you're coming from there, and unfortunately, I tried to find value in this race, and the more I looked at the horses in the morning, the more I started trying to make excuses that Red Route 1 could uh, be a threat. We all know Red Route One's only chances for a fast pace. Mm -hmm. With the exit of first mission, it looks like that's not going to be the case. But maybe he can fill out the trifecta in some fashion. The thing that I'm worried about with Mage is that, you know, it's well documented. The horse doesn't have to come from way back. You know, it's just that he gets off slow and then, you know, Javier's not going to rush him. It'll take his time. But probably because we now know the pace is going to be, you know, pedestrian, most likely, uh, hopefully Mage will be alert and he'll be more forwardly placed as he was in his earlier races. With that being said, you know, everybody was like, oh, when Coffee with Chris, the local hope at 20 to 1 morning line uh, came into the mix, everybody thought, oh, there, there's going to be your pace setter. And it's not the case because you talk to John Saltzman, mm -hmm. you talk to uh, Jamie Rodriguez, uh, the rider. They want to kind of like just be off of yes. the leader, which we all know most likely will be National Treasure. I'm not sold on National Treasure as a quality, you know, triple crown, you know, type of grade one horse. But as we all know, as handicappers. You let any horse go out on a loose lead or a lead where you're talking 47. You know, we are we might actually see 48 and change. If we see 48 and change, it, National it, Treasure is it, exactly. going to be gone. Yeah, go to the windows before they hit the far turn. Yeah, because Mate is going to have just too much to do. Right. So, you know, with that, I've backed off a of Red Route 1 as my top pick. I'll still use him underneath, but unfortunately... <laughs> I think I'll, I'll probably be back in National Treasure because of that scenario that I think might come about. I agree. And, and and also value on National Treasure and Mage has gone down quite a bit as First Mission was likely... To, um, yeah, the second choice. Yeah. yeah. And also because there was still a chance, even with First Mission in the field, that National Treasure would be able to get a somewhat easy lead on the rail and maybe he'd get like 9-2 to or 5-1. to one. Now he'll be the clear-cut second choice, and while he still has a good shot, the value isn't there as much as it was before. Yeah, you, you're, we're probably going to be looking at, you know, 4-5 to five on Mage. Around there. You know, 5-2, to two, maybe even 2-1 to one on National yeah. Treasure. So that that's going to be a tough exacto to take yeah. uh, either way. You know, a lot of people are, like, just going to have to watch the race. But outside of the prickness, John, you're the one who does all the handicapping for the racing biz. Uh, what other type of values or, or best bets do you have on Cyrus card? There's two horses I'm really intrigued by. In the Jim McKay turf sprint, I really like number 10, Coppola, coming in from Total Downs. He's really stepped up since he started racing on grass earlier this year. Made a nice move once he got clear and, and kicked away to win an allowance optional claiming race powerfully at Total Downs on Derby Week. And in the Maryland sprint, I'm going with the Maryland bread. Al loves Josie. Tossed out his last start in the Frank Whiteley. He broke badly, had a lot of traffic, and just 
it was not his day. Take out that race and he won back-to-back -back allowance optional claiming races at Laurel Park in very impressive style. His speed and pace figures match up with those of the other contenders and you'll get much better odds. There you go. So check out the racing biz. Either download the app or go online. John uh, does the handicapping for all of the Laurel races. Racing Biz covers all the mid-Atlantic tracks, so check it out. And uh, for John, myself, and everybody at Racing Biz, we wish you a wonderful 148th Preakness Stakes. Cut. Cut. Right. Good, awesome. Good job. Nice job. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Very good.